Hey, this is Angie Scarpa. And Melanie Maka Evie. And Emily Burton. And Alice Austin of Black Savage. And you're listening to Tom and Zeus on Shouted Out Loudcast. That's right. We're back with another episode of Dorm Damage, the show where anything and everything is on the table and the table gets smashed. Another part one. This one was very difficult for me, Zeus. Mm -hmm. How about you? What are we doing this week? This week, we're doing favorite guitar solos. So we're not saying riffs. We're not saying the whole song. We're saying what solo Mm -hmm. makes you want to fucking air guitar or crank up when you're in the car. Just what moves you. Okay. And I can't wait because uh, I think our list is going to be varied. We're each doing mm-hmm. 10. So we're no honorable mentions because I'm sure there are a million other ones we can get to. Mm-hmm. I'm like, for the first beginning, I'm like, I don't know. Which guitar solos do I love? Am I going to get to 10? By the time I finished, I'm like, uh, which do I cut down? I know. Same. I agree. I agree. Now, did you give yourself any like self-imposed rules for this? Like, for example, for me, as usual, I didn't include anything. Kiss. That's just my. That's my personal rule. I didn't include anything. Kiss. It's your personal I, private business. It's my personal private. And what I also tried to do is, I tried to. And we'll get into what we get on the list. I tried to pick solos that like that that I personally love, and not ones that are like world renowned as like the greatest and if you pick those that's yeah rain saying. and blood the solo from that well, yeah. right, or, or or other ones that are you know at the risk of sounding like a hipster doofus like ones that are like cliche famous like legendary and if, if you have those in your list maybe so, i mean some on my list are, are are cliche legendary too but for some of the bands i was like i'm not gonna pick that because everybody knows that's great so i'm gonna pick this one instead but that was just me okay yeah, for me, the only rule I did is like one per artist. Oh, yeah, so definitely. Yes, there's definitely. Different guitarists in a lot of different bands. Yep. Like, for instance, if I picked the Kiss one, I mean, I yep. could have picked one of four, yep. right? Uh, so I try to keep it to one art, one per artist. And the Eagles, the same way I could have done. Yep. Uh, all right. So I'll go first this time. And for this one, I could have picked picked a couple from this album, but I picked Rod Stewart's Hot Legs. Ooh, excellent. Jim Cregan, Billy Peck, Gary Granger played guitars on it. So I fucking love this song. I love the groove. And then all of a sudden there's a a bass solo in the beginning. Boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden... Bam, 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 bam. Oh, love that guitar solo. The video is needs is something that probably needs to be broken down. That and, oh, yeah. um, and start me up are the funniest fucking videos, coked up videos you'll ever see. And it's got our friend Carmine a piece in it. Nice. <laughs> but I fucking love the solo to Hot Legs. That's nice. my number 10. Nice. All right. For mine, well, these are, as we usually say when we do these episodes, these are not really in any particular order. At least for me, at least for me, this is just kind of, I I threw these up against the wall and these are bands I love, songs with solos. So number 10 for me, a band I could have picked anything from, and I was not going to go with the legendary obvious one of Stairway to Heaven because that was going to make everybody's list. But I went with one off of the debut Zeppelin album. And I went with a solo from dazed and confused because I love how it starts off with that part of the song that Zeus hates when it's all psychedelic and wacky and Jimmy page doing all kind of crazy shit. And then it turns into a proper just solo. I, I love that. Confusing that with the whole lot of love when he's like, eh, eh. Oh yeah. Well, he, yeah, there's, there's a little no, there's no part, part of dazed and confused. I hate. Okay, good point. Okay, so yeah, but there is a little bit of a, a psychedelic breakdown, but you're right. It's the, it's the whole lot of love part that you ate. But yeah, again, could have picked a million, but Days of Confused, love the song. And one of the reasons I love the song is that solo is just killer. All right. It is killer. Yep. So 
Uh, number nine for me, Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive. Oh, nice. Good one. When it's all acoustic and then he saw it's alive. Yep. Yeah. Great oh, solo. I love it. It's got, yep. it's just melodic, fits perfect in the song, and then goes right back into the, the, the vocals. Yep. Fucking love it. Always moved me. And that's, and I like what she Sambora's solos. Oh, yeah. He's great. He's very underrated. I mean, yeah. In, I mean, in our circles where we obsess over this stuff, we know, but a lot of people like, Who's the guitarist for Bon Jovi? Be like, dude, it's fucking Richie Sambora. Like the guy's oh, fucking it's great. Just, yeah. I, there's nothing in there that you're ever like, oh, that's awful. Oh, that's what. No. His guitar solos and his guitar great. riffs are fucking great. Yep. They're catchy yep. and fun. Yeah. The biggest curse for Richie Sambora was that the band was named after the most handsome man in friggin' 80s rock. Well, he's a hired gun, but let's well, be blunt. It's Bon okay. Jovi's band and he hired guys to come on. Oh, I know. I know. So, yeah. And his biggest vice is the fact that he's a fall down fucking drunk <laughs> uh, what are you talking about never really caused me any problems got any of my solos on your list there zeus i hope you do <laughs> all right number nine for me again could have picked any but this one really st- stood out for me uh in terms of allison chains and what jerry cantrell can do this solo just rips and the thing that adds to it and i think this might be some more on my list here is when the vocalist kind of introduces the soul with like a Ugh, or a something and that is them bones off of dirt the solo just fucking burns on this one. And Jerry Cantrell, I don't think anybody loves him more than me and you. Yeah. Whether whether it's his singing, whether it's his harmonies, whether it's his acoustic stuff, whether it's his shredding heavy stuff, he's just the he's the man. So I went with them. One of my bones. favorite solos. I'm glad yep. you picked that. Yep. Love it. Number eight, and I could probably pick all his songs. And that is, I'm going to go with Mr. Crowley. Oh, Randy oh, Rhodes. Okay. Nice. In Aussie. That fucking that's prob- solo. That, that's the standout for me. Yeah. Yeah. In the spooky organ in the background. He's just, yep. you know, in a fucking zone on his own. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I mean, there's so many. It's my favorite guitar album of all time. Yep. And uh, to me, I, I just had to pick one thing from there. I didn't know because I'm, I love them all. Yeah. So much. So I'll go I, I, I'd, probably. I'd probably go with that one too if you're picking something from Randy Rhodes. Yeah. All right. Number eight for me. So this is kind of funny. So you usually don't think of this band as somebody with doing solos. So and I'm kind of cheating here because it it it's not technically a guitar solo. It's technically an electric sitar solo. Oh, okay. No. And that is the song. Do it again by Steely Dan. If you know this song, you know this solo. It's legendary. It's fucking amazing. It's Denny Diaz does it. It's it's it. It, it was actually in Guitar Hero. That's how friggin' famous this is. It's legendary and it's funny because it it you could tell you like oh what kind of guitar is he using? Well, he's not. He's using an electric sitar. So maybe it should have been on Sitar Hero. <laughs> um, but yeah, do it again. Steely Dan's one of my all-time favorites. They're not known for this kind of stuff, but this is early Steely Dan when they before they really, really got into like the the smooth jazz stuff. Uh so the do it again solo. If you're not familiar with it, go listen to it. The solo is killer. Gotcha. All right. Number seven for me, Tom. And that is one of my favorite guitar heroes. I could pick a bunch of songs from him. And that's Rainbows Can't Happen Here, Richie Blackmore. Ooh, good one. Okay. One of my favorite songs of all time. One of the best Rainbow songs. The lyrics are so awesome. Yep. Which you don't usually expect to say, but not that Rainbow lyrics are bad, but they still hold true to this day. Can't Happen Here. I remember seeing the video when I was a, a young kid and Rainbow was a band that I gravitated and always had this affinity. There's a lot of sentimental thoughts that go with Rainbow and all the. And again, I could pick, I don't know how many songs from Richie Blackmore, but I went with Can't Happen Here. It's got a lot of feel in it. Nice. Okay. My number seven, uh, one of my favorite metal bands. I, I'm a bigger fan of the earlier half of their catalog. Uh, but Dimebag Daryl from Pantera, absolutely love his tone. Very, very unique and recognizable tone. Could have picked anything from him, but the one standout for me, it's one of the greatest songs. Uh, and the solo is just absolutely killer. It's emotional. It's heavy. And that is the solo from Cemetery Gates by Pantera. Uh, it's just the song itself is just haunting and heavy. 
and uh, his soul just fits perfectly in there. It's, it, I mean, anything Dimebag does is amazing. Uh, but I went with Cemetery Gates. A lot of uh, like emotion and power behind that solo. So, gotcha. don't know it. So okay, that's, why I was- that's okay. So for me, uh, I'm gonna go. Let me get some of the cliche ones that you would expect from me. Yep. And that's Hotel California, Don Felder, Joe Walsh, the Harmony solo outro. It, yep. We all know it. I mean, it's almost made the song. It's so legendary. Felder is just a guitarist, so underrated. I love it. And Walsh, the harmony solos and the video of them performing that live. It's just, uh, I, I mean, it still moves me to this day and it makes that song so well. You know, nice. Love. Fucking fantastic. It's one of the legends. Speaking of legends, for me at least, um, could have picked a lot from him, but it's one of my all-time favorite songs by him. I know it's popular, uh, but it's got a very cool solo in the middle of the song. But the thing that seals it for me is the outro solo uh, when he shreds. We reviewed it on ARC, and that is Let's Go Crazy by Prince. Could have picked a bunch of things by him, but I think this is great. It has a very nice solo in the middle, but the way that the song, the outro, when he just kind of burns it up for a little bit. So it's kind of like little two solos in one, but had to, had to have Prince on my list. So let's go crazy. Okay. Let's go with Prince. Number five for me, you already done the band. I mean, come on. I, I stay where to heaven, Jimmy Page. Yep. Just, it's it, so beautiful. It's probably the best ever. They honestly. are so beautiful. They are so beautiful. Uh, I can't. I mean, I just, it's almost magical. Yeah, almost I like, agree. They were taken over. The solo, somebody was t- taken over. The devil took control of <laughs> yep. Jimmy's hands. Yep. Unbelievable. Uh, number five for me, one of the, when I think of my favorite guitar solos that I never, ever, ever get sick of, one of them is Stairway to Heaven. And the other one is Alive from Pearl Jam. The outro solo on that, it's it, it, it actually reminds me of stairway to heaven in terms of how it just it just takes you on a ride as the song ends and i love it's probably my one of my if, if it's not my favorite pearl jam song it's right there and that solo is yeah. just mind-blowing incredible and i will never get sick of it could have been yeah. number one but again i'm not really numbering these uh, so uh, pearl jam alive for me all right tom number four for me it's the biggest cliche of all time and it's free bird yes Alan collins gary rosington oh my god incredible if dude. you have an air guitar to that oh, in your life so you're, good. you're missing out yep. it's just the way bills the slide and then all of a sudden at some point he just goes and it, yep. it's, it's 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 insane it's, it goes on and on and on it's just insanity yep but it moves you and it's got touch feel speed you name it, it's all there. There's a reason why that song is is such so legendary. Yep, agreed. All right, number four for me. Again, we keep saying this could have picked anything, but this one always stands out for me as one of my favorite songs by this band. This is one of my favorite guitarists of all time. Uh, I love his tone, his sound, and his solos. But I went with Guns N' Roses, Out to Get Me. Uh, I think the solo kills. Slash is just one of my all-time favorites. I never get sick of hearing him. Probably could have picked literally anything of a Vapetite, but the solo on Out to Get Me, and it, of course, it's one of my favorite songs, so I, ha- I had to put it on my list. I went back and forth. I'm like, do I want this? Do I want that? And the more I listen, I'm like, I'm going with Out to Get Me to make the list. Yeah, it, it's a whole album. That's another Yeah, exactly. Guitar exactly. Album, yep. Yep. Right? Yep. All right. I could have picked a bunch of songs from him, but I want to give uh, – I talked about this one time on ARC. And that is Credence Clearwater Revival, uh, John and Tom Fogarty. I'll give the brother, the rhythm guitarist, a little love. Yep. yep. And I'm going to go with the one that moves me the best. And although I'll save another one for late for next time, but I <laughs> I heard it through the grapevine. Oh, it yes. Is, is probably one of the greatest covers I've ever heard anybody do. Total, totally agree. Such a fucking jam. I don't know if I want to air bass, yep. air drum, or air guitar, or it's try awesome. to cover his vocals. 
Yep. How the fuck do you take I heard it through the grapevine from Marvin Gaye and make it better? Yeah. I don't know. But they did it. And the guitar on it is so crystal clean. Yep. Just so fucking bam, 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 bam. It's oh so good. God. Yeah. It's good. It, you're right. It's definitely one of the best covers. Oh my God. Yep. It's just the easiest thing to do is get what is it, Chronicles? Is that the top twenty when they have twenty? That's songs? the that's that's the legendary get Chronicles. that album, guys. If you yep. if you don't have it, that has most of their hits. Yep. But Credence is a favorite of mine. I, it, yep. the, the album in the whole that thing is just incredible. Not one bad song on there. And they've got so many great songs. Yep. All right, number three for me. Uh, one of my favorite bands I talk about all the time, one of my favorite guitarists who is tremendously underrated, and that's because he's in a band with arguably one of the greatest drummers of all time. I'm going with Limelight from Rush, Alex Lifeson, one of the most beautifully soulful solos that fits the song perfectly. Um, it's, I mean, I could have picked a bunch of different things. I did have some kind of, kind of dark horse kind of ones, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to fuck around here with this. I'm, I'm going limelight. I never get sick of the song and I sure as shit. I never get sick of that solo. It's just, it's beautiful. I know you love it. Yep. It's yep. your second song on ARC. That's right. Yep. Or is it number one for you? I think it's number one. It is number one. Yes. Limelight's number one. Yep. Wow. Yep. All right. Number two for me. And this is the only one I'm ever going to pick from these guys, probably. And it's a real dark horse, but I think okay. you know the song. Okay. And you'll know why I'm picking it. And that is Roll with the Changes, REO Speed. Oh, yeah. Nice. Of course. Yeah. Gary Rich. Gary Rich, underrated, dude. Very fucking underrated. Solo. He's watch the videos of it and watch gr- how fucking just like loose and sl- like he's playing on it. So much feel. And there's like slide in it to the song. It makes you know, Kevin Cronin look badass. You, it's such a it's such a great point. Poor Gary Richrath was so good, rest in peace. So good, but he was in a band with Kevin Cronin, the <laughs> same "Keep on Loving You." He's probably like, "What the fuck, dude?" Now, granted, it put them on the top of the world, but he was great. He was yeah. really underrated. Ario Speedwagon is. We talked about this. Those bands that were good and had some rockers. Yeah, but they realized when the when the ballads came in, that's where the money's at. That's right. Chicago that's right. Journey. Yep. Uh, Ario Speedwagon, Sticks, Sticks, all those bands. Like, oh, yep. like, hold on a second. If we do like ballad piano shit, like that's everything right. changed. Oh, yep. Foreigner. Yep. So, yeah, that's agreed. just that, five of them, right that's there. Right. They just yep. changed their sound. Mm-hmm. Not that their ballads are bad. Yep. They're good. It's yep. just. You know, they had some other stuff there that was pretty good, too. But yeah. Roll With The Changes is badass. Good call. Good one. Yeah. All right. Number two for me. We talked about this on ARC because it's one of my all-time favorite modern, quote-unquote, modern day solos. Uh, one of my favorite guitar albums of all time, even though it's kind of modern. And it's the one of those solos where you, when just when you think the solo is ending, it t- turns the corner and comes back for more. And that is Avenged Sevenfold, Coming Home, my favorite song off the album. Um, the solo in that is just absolutely, it kills because like I said, you think it's getting ready to wrap up and they're going to continue back with the vocals. Like, nope, we got more. And yes, I know his name is sinister gates relax, <laughs> but he's, he's just, I, I I'm going to, I'm, I'm seeing him in July. I don't know when this episode is going to drop. It may or may have already happened, but first time I'm going to see them live and I cannot fucking wait. Yeah. I didn't like the unplugged version on kiss unplugged that they did. Jesus Christ. Coming home. Didn't Cinderella yeah. have a song coming home? Didn't yes. Scorpions have a song called coming Everybody home? Everybody has Doesn't one Kiss called, have yeah. a song called yes. coming home? Yes. Yes. Everybody does. Yes. <laughs> very right. different. Very different song. Yeah. Number one for me. Um, ear guitar this a gazillion times. I think the video made me fall in love with this. I, if I would say the best solos of all for me, really, I would go... Hotel California, Led Zeppelin's uh, Stairway to Heaven, um, Free Bird, and this. Everything else I love, but those four more than any. Oh, and probably Mr. Crowley, Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah. It nice. is the way it just starts off slow yep. and the way Axel is dancing to this. And then all of a sudden it just starts getting like, I always called it like the fishing 
guitar solo. Like he's fishing. Like he, yeah. he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. And then all of a sudden he's reeling it in. He's pulling it back. He's like, and then he's like swinging back and yep. forth and just like, and then Axel's like doing all his moves behind it. And then it leads to Axel like uh, doing his microphone, spinning it around and catching it and then going right into it. Oh my God. That whole scene, that whole video, mm-hmm. it just, it, it's so melodic. It's got so much feel to it which is what gets me, which is why I I just, for me, these kind of solos, these type of guitarists are the ones that move me. There are great guitars. I haven't touched it. We'll get on it afterwards, but I want to hear your number one. My number one. I'm, I'm, I know at the beginning of this, I said, Oh, I'm not going to pick this. I'm I'm not, I'm not fucking around with my number one. All right. Um, It's my favorite guitar solo. It might, I mean, it's my, I don't know. It's my favorite. Everything. Zeus is holding up a sheet of paper. I don't know what it is, but my number one is the Master of Puppets. Metallica, <laughs> Master of Puppets. It was I had going Metallica. To be, I had one. I, well, I was just going to say it was it was a coin flip between one and Master of Puppets. And on any given day, it could change my mind. But those are the two that forever will just be. Do I like this one better? No, I, I like I like this one. No, I like this one better. But I'm go I'm going this one. I'm going Puppets. So. So here's the thing. I know that thrash stuff, some of those solos and other stuff, yep. they're hard. Yeah. To me, they're not as melodic. And that's me. I don't, you know, we yeah. have our own way of of what moves us. Yeah. There's two other guys that I had like five songs from them I could have picked up. And that's Rat and that's Dokken. But like I wanted to get these ones in there. Me too. I hit them. But and I could have easily the picked a guitarist I love. And I could have easily picked other things from Kirk Hammett. There's a cup. There's a bunch of other like soulful, melodic, non thrash solos that he does, especially later in their career, like Black Album and Post, where they're 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 hard rock like metal, but they're not they're not thrashy like Master Puppet solos. But I do want to make an observation, which I find very very interesting, and I'm sure there's going to be fucking outrage from the listeners. Twenty songs. I know where you're going to go. Nothing. From Eddie Van Halen or Hendrix. Well, Hendrix, I don't care. Or and Clapton. I, I, nah, I'll tell you right or now back. with Eddie Van. Halen, I'll tell you right now with Eddie Van Halen. I, I'm, I know I'm. I know I'm. I'm going to be speaking out of school here, but sometimes the consistent finger tapping stuff, it 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 doesn't work for me every single time. Like I, like I, I, Eddie Van Halen's a cleat. Like <laughs> Van Halen. Do you think Eddie Van Halen Van Halen is a clean guitar player? Clean? I don't. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing I'll say about Eddie. I think, I think his a sloppy and not in, as an insult sloppy. No. I think he's got a you know like I think it's not I think a clean sound. It's not Clapton ish. Okay, but here's the thing. Like here, here, here's the thing with Eddie Van Halen. I know we're just kind of veering off into a little bit because I know that's the big thing is you have we have no Eddie Van Halen on this. I think Eddie Van Halen riff wise, I think is masterful. I mean, especially on like Fair Warning and stuff like that. And obviously, he's the, people think he's the greatest of all time. But a lot of his solos are that that finger. T- I know I know there's other non finger tapping melodic solos that he has, but sometimes I'm just like, you know what, I. I love everything about this song except for the solo. Whereas for me, all these solos that we just named, they're they're tasteful, they're so they're soulful, they contribute to the to the melody of the song. I think Eddie's the opposite. I don't I is he talented? Fucking Christ, he's talented. So is Ingve Malmstein. I'm not saying they're the same, but that finger tap and like eruption shit, it's nice. But but I'd rather hear the solo from Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah, and that's where I'm getting at. That's yeah. what I was trying to say the long way around. Like I, the songs, and I, no one's denying his talent. No, not at all. Anything like that stuff. Not at all. All I'm saying is, for me, I like the guys that bend the notes and hold them. I love the exactly. Watch. So exactly. if you look at these songs, exactly, all of them probably for me have a part in the solo where it's like, right, like right. there's some a note holding. This feel to it. Yep. Um, there's some touch to it. I, that's what moves me. I don't need the 50 miles an hour, like, like well, shit. And, that's, and that's the thing. I mean, even a song like Jump, which I can't fucking stand. Yeah. I think it's one of the worst songs in recorded history. But the solo, you're like, it starts off great. 
And then, and he then just goes into a keyboard solo. Well, that just don't even get me going. Uh, again, the only reason I brought this up is because I know listeners are going to be like, how the fuck did you have this episode and not pick a Van Halen song? The one song I think like that, I think Dreams off 5150 is kind of like that is beautiful, like like just but what's the, solo. But, but what's the difference there? That's a different version of Van Halen. That's a soulful, melodic, emotional Van Halen. Yeah, I think it with- is I think most of the earlier Van Halen stuff are just is incredible. The tap in, the sloppy yeah, guitar playing. It's great. The riff and yep. just it's incredible. Yep. But I don't think like, oh, give me the solo from this. And oh, what about eruption? Yeah. Well, no. I'm sorry. Eruption doesn't move me. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. No, the first 10,000 times you hear it, you're like, wow, that's crazy. But uh, I, I don't want to hear it. Like, I'm impressed with somebody playing darts, throwing and hitting a fucking yeah. thing. I'm right. impressed with a golfer putting it in. I don't want to watch that shit. I want to watch right. football and hockey and, and other stuff. You, yep. You're right. They're wonderful things, but like that doesn't do it for me. No. These I'm, songs do it for me. And I'm sure when we do part two, uh, we'll have, I mean, there's a, there's a Van Halen solo that just didn't make my list, right? An Eddie Van Halen solo that was I'm very sure close to we me. each have something yeah. from, from Eddie. But, but, but a category like this, somebody's got to make the cut, which is why we do part one and then part two, because there's a ton of stuff that we missed on, well, not missed, but a ton of stuff that didn't make our lists. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, till next time. Peace out, Girl Scout.